welcome to Newsbreak Live. It's April 23rd, and here is the latest news at the top of the hour. I'm Hiba Sama. Thanks for joining us. Torrance police are investigating a fatal accident involving a car and motorcycle crash that happened this morning. Traffic was shut down in all directions of Rolling Hills Way and Pacific Coast Highway for nearly five hours. A Torrance alert was, was sent out to avoid the area. Torrance police say the preliminary investigation shows that a driver of a 2017 Ford F-150 pickup was traveling east on Pacific Coast Highway, approaching Rolling Hills Way before making a left turn into a driveway when the pickup was struck by a motorcycle that was traveling the opposite direction on Pacific Coast Highway. The motorcyclist, a 29-year-old male resident of San Pedro, was treated by Torrance Fire but died from his injuries. The driver of the pickup had minor injuries. Alcohol or drugs were not a factor, but high speed may have played a role. According to witnesses, the motorcyclist was racing another car that fled the scene. The name of the motorcyclist has not yet been released. If anyone has information about this case, you're urged to contact the Torrance Police Department at 310-618-5557. And not too far away, there was another accident involving larger vehicles. Traffic was partially shut down in all directions at the intersection of Crenshaw and Lomita Boulevards after a tractor, trailer and box truck were involved in a traffic collision around 9.15 this morning. Fluid spilled on the road, but crews were there and were quick to clean it up. Torrance police said there were no injuries from this accident. Traffic resumed around 10.50 this morning. A number of businesses and homes will soon be without power for a short while. Torrance City staff are reminding people about a planned power outage scheduled to start at 9 p.m. tonight and will continue through 6 a.m. Areas affected are Jefferson Avenue on the south side and east of Cedar. Southern California Edison staff will be performing maintenance on the electrical system in the area. They will temporarily turn off power due to safety. They have plans to modernize their grid by making upgrades and repairs to increase reliability. Southern California Edison says they try to isolate outages to small areas and complete work there quickly. A freshman at El Camino College is being remembered by his teammates and the community. 19-year-old Slade and Mole was recently killed by a driver under the influence last Thursday. His teammates, family, friends and faculty from El Camino College gathered at the Warrior Baseball Field to remember the student just yesterday. His sister talked about how, ex how he excelled in everything he did. His jersey and gear were on display as people signed notes on his number. The number 18 was also painted into the field to remember the star catcher who moved from Alaska just a year ago. Mole was killed after a 16-year-old driver ran a red light hitting two cars. Mole was waiting to cross the street on the corner of Hawthorne and Sepulveda Boulevard when he was also struck by the vehicle. He was a key member of the 2017 undefeated baseball team at South High School in Anchorage. His coaches have started a GoFundMe page to help bring his body back home to Alaska. If you would like to donate, go to fundme.com and search Slayton Mole. You can be part of a large campaign this Thursday to help reduce traffic and pollution. Torrance Transit is calling all residents to get on board and take a ride. The department is participating in National Get On Board Day this week and want you to take a break from behind the wheel and take advantage of Torrance Transit 11 routes. They hope people will be able to see all of the benefits of taking public transportation. The new National Awareness and Advocacy Day is all about increasing support for public transportation among riders and non-riders. Statistics show that a household can save nearly $100,000 by taking public transportation and living with one less car. Also, that a person can reduce his or her chances of being in an accident by more than 90% simply by taking public transit compared to a car. Now, every $1 invested in public transportation generates $4 in economic returns. Officials say if you ride the bus to make sure to provide some feedback on your experience at transit.torrentca.gov. A place where you can explore authentic Japanese foods and products is now moving to the boulevard. 
The Delamo Fashion Center will have a Mitsua marketplace soon. Two building permits have been issued. City staff say they're in the process of building out their new space at the former Marshalls building at the mall. They will be relocating from their Western Avenue spot. Plans are to refurbish the space with a modern design that has aluminum fins and metal panels along the exterior. There will be a new dining patio along the west side of the building for their food court customers. Mitsua Marketplace is the largest Japanese supermarket in the United States. They have everything from Japanese groceries, general items, electric appliances, cosmetics, and much more. Get ready because this week you'll be able to experience history and if you're lucky enough, a special ride in the skies. The 2019 Tour Wings of Freedom will be landing at the Torrance Airport this Thursday. You can visit and explore the legendary World War II planes, including the B-17 Flying Fortress, B-24 Liberator, Heavy Bombers, B-25 Mitchell, P-51 Mustang, and for the first time, the P-40 Warhawk. Hosted by the Collings Foundation, ground display admission will be $15 for adults and $5 for kids. Other ways you can experience the aircraft is by flying in one or even becoming a fighter pilot for the day. The Collings Foundation is a nonprofit education organization that preserves and exhibits rare historical artifacts so Americans can learn more about their heritage through participation. To learn more, go to callingsfoundation.org. The hours for the displays are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. from this Friday through the weekend. The Delamo Fashion Center is celebrating Earth Day all week long and want you to participate. Simon Property officials say the event lineup with their focus on sustainability is a focus of their brand and areas of business from how they plan, develop and operate properties. This Friday and Saturday at Earth Day recycling events are taking place as people are able to bring unwanted and unused electronics including TVs, computer monitors, printers, fax machines and much more. The disposal collection site is located between Hometown Buffet off Carson and Delamo Circle East. It will take place all day. Now there are several positions open at the Torrance Police Department and you may be the perfect fit. The team is accepting applications for a public safety dispatcher who would work at their communication center serving Torrance Police and Fire. Then if you're interested in becoming a police officer, you can apply as well. They have released application filing, written exam, interview and physical agility dates. You can find all of this at torrentca.gov. Now let's get to the weather. Today it was sunny with a high of 69 degrees and it was a bit windy. Tonight you can expect a low of 57. Then tomorrow there's a high of 72 degrees with an expected low of 56. Then on Thursday it will get cloudy with a high of 67 and a low of 57 degrees. A measles outbreak was declared this week in Los Angeles County. Five cases were recently reported. Measles is a highly contagious viral infection that spreads from person to person and can happen even before the person carrying it has any symptoms. However, these incidents are not related to ones from before. Possible locations of measles exposure are the Tom Bradley International Terminal, UCLA France Hall and Bolter Hall, Cal State Los Angeles Main Library, El Pollo Loco in La Cañada, Flint Ridge, and Al Saws Tacos in Glendale. Now, there are no known measles risk at the locations that were just listed, but if you've been there during these time frames, you could be at risk of developing infections. The State Department of Public Health says there are 23 measles cases confirmed so far this year as of last week in California. Some symptoms include fever, cough, a runny nose and red eyes. A rash usually appears 10 to 21 days after exposure. Health officials say anyone who isn't fully immunized against measles to get fully vaccinated with two doses of immunization. For more information, go to publichealth.lacounty.gov. A large big box store is recalling a toy. The Bull's Eyes Playground wooden toy cars are being recalled by Target. Officials say it's a choking hazard. The items were sold between October and November of 2018 and includes nearly 495,000 wooden toys. The Consumer Product and Safety Commission says there have been no injuries reported. You can return it for a full refund at any Target store. 
It's Mosquito Awareness Week in California now through the 27th and what marks experts call the beginning of a mosquito season. Torrance City Cable reporter Michael Patterson sat down with a representative from the Los Angeles County West of Vector Control District recently to discuss what people can do at home to reduce the risk of getting bit. If that buzzing sounds familiar, you probably know what's associated with it. They're a nuisance. They'll bite you inside your home. They'll bite during the day. And with temperatures on the rise, mosquito breeding season is around the corner. Aaron Arugai from the L.A. County West Vector Control District says that this year's season might be worse than in recent years. This year's unique. You know, we had more rain than normal, so we're all kind of waiting to see what happens. With Los Angeles County getting above average rainfall this year, there may be more standing water around people's homes, which Arugai says is the ideal breeding ground for invasive 80s mosquito species. Every little water source around your home can now be a breeding source for these 80s mosquitoes. Here is where it gets complicated. The native species to Southern California, Culex mosquitoes, can carry the potentially fatal West Nile virus. However, a species not native to California, Aedes mosquitoes, have arrived and give experts like Arugai a lot of trouble. The 380 species, they don't transmit West Nile virus. They're more associated with tropical diseases like Zika virus, dengue fever, chikungunya, yellow fever. The chances are not high because all these things have to line up in the proper time frame, but it's a concern. Arugai says these 80 species are especially difficult because they can breed in plants and as little as one tablespoon of water. Plant cuttings in water that your people are trying to root or lucky bamboo, things like that that you bring in the home or any plant with a saucer of water underneath it. If you bring it in the home, now you're breeding mosquitoes inside the house. So we just want everybody to get rid of standing water, have repellent available, exclude mosquitoes from your home and avoid areas where you know there's mosquito activity. Arugai says that there are free resources like larvae eating fish that the LA West Vector Control District can provide to get rid of the mosquito before it becomes a problem. And if they have things that they don't know how to take care of, if they have a bad swimming pool, or there's an abandoned home next to them, then just call us. We'll come out free of charge and we'll treat it, we'll get rid of the problem and help protect the neighborhood. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Michael Patterson. Thanks, Michael. It can take as little as a week for a mosquito egg in a potted plant to turn into an adult mosquito to report a mosquito problem or to get more information about West Nile virus, call the LA County West Vector Control District at 310-915-7370. Now don't forget to tune into the City Council meeting tonight that starts at 7 p.m. You'll have the best seat in the House as many are expected to fill the Council Chambers tonight. Staff will proclaim May as Mental Health Awareness Month in the city of Torrance. There will be a special presentation of the 2019 Hometown Heroes Military Banner Recognition Program. Then city council members will discuss some concerns made by the Seaside Rancho's residents about safety during the holiday season when lights go up. Now let's get to events. You still have time to eat at Lazy Dog Restaurant and Bar while giving back to the Torrance Rosefoot Association tonight. Until close, 15% of your total bill will be donated back to the organization. It's part of their efforts to fundraise. Then tomorrow night from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., the Torrance Historical Society is hosting their first annual fun and games fundraiser. The evening is for adults only. There will be games and snacks. The buy-in is $5 dollars for a donation. Then the Delamo Fashion Center announced Macy's is having spot treatments at the Clarence counter from this Friday through May 12th. You can call 310-370-8511 extension 2323 to book your appointment. Well, in just two minutes, Marilyn Jimenez Davila from the Red Cross will talk about a campaign that kicks off this week and it'll be saving lives. We'll be just back in a few minutes.
Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. Joining me is Marilyn Jimenez Davila, who is a Los Angeles media relations specialist for the Red Cross. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Yeah, thank you. This Saturday, across the country, different communities will be coming together for a big campaign. Talk to me about what Sound the Alarm is. Yeah, so this weekend, the American Red Cross is launching a Sound the Alarm uh, a home fire safety event. Um, it's going to be, um, you know, the, the focus is to install 100,000 smoke alarms in um, throughout the nation in 100 high risk cities. Here in Los Angeles, we're going to install 4,000 of those alarms. We have four really fun and exciting events coming up. The first one's going to be in Pomona, um, that's this Saturday, and um, then we're going to go to Panorama City. Then we're going to be in Long Beach, and then we're going to end in East L.A. Um, so, yeah, we invite everyone to come out, volunteer, join us. Um, it's going to be really fun. These type of events obviously wouldn't be possible without volunteers, community partners, and the American Red Cross is looking for volunteers to assist with this campaign. So talk to me about that. What does that mean as far as if you become a volunteer for this campaign? Yeah, so you can go um, online, visit uh, soundthealarm.org for Los Angeles, and you can sign up. You can sign up to volunteer. You don't need a previous experience. You um, just sign up, register, and show up day of the event. Uh, we are going to provide training there. We're going to teach you how to install smoke alarms and how to provide a, a home fire safety plan, how to help educate people um, on what to do during if a home fire does happen to them. And then, yeah, and we'll go out and, and install the alarms that day. For people watching at home, maybe they haven't even thought about their smoke alarm, but this is a big problem here in the United States. Each year, the Red Cross responds to an average of more than 62,000 disasters, with the majority of them being home fires. And according to a recent survey, one in 10 people haven't purchased a smoke alarm because they just think it's too expensive. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And um, like you said, the Red Cross just released a results on a nationwide survey about home fires. And um, it's pretty uh, surprising. Um, you know, two out of five people believe they are more likely to win the lottery than actually lose their home to a home fire. And wow. even though most Americans know that a, a smoke alarm can save a life, um, nearly 50% of us have uh, disconnected uh, a smoke alarm or, or taken out the batteries when the smoke alarm has gone off. And that's another thing, whether they've installed a new one when it's time um, or ha having it installed properly, what are some other statistics you can share with me in regards to that to put this into perspective of how important this campaign is? Yeah, um, it's very important. Uh, at the Red Cross, um, we respond to an emergency every eight minutes. Uh, wow. and about you know 90 percent of these disasters are home fires so home fires are the biggest you know the the most common uh, disaster and and that's why we focus so much on this um, and you know just having a smoke alarm in your home a working smoke alarm can reduce the risk of death in a fire in half wow so why is the mayor, I mean, I mean, it's kind of, you just kind of answered it, why, but why is this one big focus of the American Red Cross on home fire safety? Well, um, we, we want to reduce deaths in, in home fires. Um, it's, this is all part of the, our home fire campaign. It's a year-long campaign, and, and Sound the Alarm is part of that. 
Um, uh, the Home Fire Campaign was launched in 2014 and to do just that, to help reduce deaths and injuries due to home fires. And um, so far, we've actually reached uh, 1.7 million Americans um, wow. through, through this. Um, and in, and um, in result of all of this, more than 550 lives have been saved nationwide. Wow, that's incredible. And you did mention some events that are happening um, this weekend and throughout next week. Um, not any in Torrance, but obviously anyone from Torrance or South Bay can go to those events. Is there anything happening locally as far as participation go that you can tell us about? Yeah, so the third event is actually in Long Beach, so it's not too far, but everyone is welcome to come join us um, at any of the four events. Um, we actually, uh, you know, Torrance and, and, and this area is part of the Los Angeles region. We actually have a, one of our chapter offices in uh, Long Beach. Um, so it, you know, if you're looking to volunteer, you're always welcome to volunteer there. We have a, a, um, also a blood center in, um, in, in Torrance. Um, so also uh, you can donate blood um, and you can also take a, a, a safety and preparedness uh, course um, as well. So all of our all of our services, all of our programs um, are here as well. But for now, I know um, that you didn't mention that you are looking for volunteers to join this campaign. So if anyone's interested, obviously they can go to the website. What is the American Red Cross Home Fire Campaign? I know Sound Alarm Sound Alarm, excuse me, is part of it. Exactly. Yeah. So Sound the Alarm is part of the Home Fire Campaign, um, and and like I was saying, it's a year long. Um, program that we have going on, but we do a big push every year in the spring. Um, last year, 2018, we actually installed uh, more than uh, 10,400 alarms here in the LA area. So we made more than 3,000 homes safer, safer just in the LA region. So that's including Torrance. If someone is interested in learning more or getting their smoke alarms checked out, where should they go? Yeah, so um, you can visit soundthealarm.org forward slash Los Angeles. All the dates are there. You can sign up to volunteer. You can request a smoke alarm if you need one as well and get more information on the Red Cross. What is the purpose of having a campaign like this? I know you did mention to save lives, uh, but it's also an opportunity not just to install, install smoke alarms, but to educate the public. And I think that's key for a lot of people who don't even think about when their alarm goes off and they want the annoying sound to go off, they just unplug it. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about that. Yeah, sure. So, you know, the volunteers that, that attend these events, you're going to go out and install smoke alarms. But like you said, you're also going to sit down with the families and help them create an, an escape plan. So, you, oh, wow. you know, help them, educate them on what a, a home fire can happen to them and help them understand that they, they should have a plan and they should practice this plan. Um, uh, most fire ex experts say that you have less than two minutes to escape your home when during a home fire um, and so you should practice this plan with your with your family you should sit down plan it out and then make sure that everyone can escape in two minutes and include your pets um, as far as planning goes this is for anybody who obviously isn't participating in this campaign but they should have a game plan right exactly. to escape a fire and what are some other prevention tools the American Red Cross would suggest when it comes to home fires yeah, so uh, you should check your smoke alarm every month. You should uh, have your have your plan, uh, plan it out with your family, um, and do this twice a year. Um, and if you have small children, make sure that when you test your smoke alarms, that they list, they hear, they know what a smoke alarm sounds like, and that they know what to do. Anything else you can add about the new National Red Cross survey about home fires? I know you mentioned some really. Um, startling statistics but is there anything else you'd like to add that you think people should know about when it comes um, to their smoke alarms and home fires um yeah i mean um having a plan is the most important um making sure that you you um you know what to do when when a fire happens um you know like i said 50 percent of us have uh, unplugged our, our smoke alarm or taking out the battery. So it's really important to to understand that um, a smoke alarm can reduce the risk of, of a life. And so you, you, 
you know, if you, if you don't have one, sign up. The Red Cross will, is here to help you. Well, Marilyn, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I think we're going to have a full page up right now of where people can get in touch with the American Red Cross in regards to the Sound Alarm campaign. Thank you so much. And they can also visit redcross.org for any more information. Have a good night. Thank you. Well, that does it for Newsbreak Live. If you ever have news or video that you'd like to share, please email us at newsbreak at torrentca.gov. Also, if you missed any portion of the show, you can catch it all on Torrent City Cable's YouTube page. City Council will start at 7 p.m. Have a great night.